Canton Narrative News wanted to just relate a few stories and community reports, I suppose. So uh, going around talking to the grassroots, talking to people of all ages and backgrounds in our communities, had some interesting conversations recently, which I wanted to relay, which informs some community mobilizing strategies. So uh, went through one park and a couple of young men asked me if I had a light as they were strapping a zoot. I said, no, we got talking. Turns out the guy who asked me is 17 years old. So that's the same age. My I've got two sons, the same age as my older son. So I said, you know, it's best not to start burning too much from this age. I'm 45 years old. And uh, I asked him, are you in education? No. Are you in employment? No. It does, does a bit of shotting. The green. I said, you're still 17, still at the start of your adult life, you know, you're technically not even an adult yet, and you know, you could still have a lot of options in front of you to improve your your life journey, and he was really appreciative, he was of um, Irish-Pakistani heritage, he'd grown up in care, so he said he had bad experiences there, and, um, and this is a common story, you know, uh, the most oppressed working class children being you know, just marginalized and just institutionally failed throughout their whole life, which starts in schools. And then obviously, you know, whatever different mental health issues they're going with and com complex stuff is not is not positively dealt with by the education system and they failed. This is a long intergenerational story. And he appreciated the, the discussion. We didn't swap numbers. I mean, you have to understand also, I'm not, you know, I'm not some amateur fool going around i'm a i'm a professional in education i've been my part, part of my professional background has been as a as a professional caseworker and advocate uh, especially around race hate crime i'm dbs checked i'm in i'm in the mainstream education system working with children every day in primary level uh, including sen children special education needs so-called i say so-called because um it hasn't really been changed since ESN, Educationally Subnormal, which was a more explicitly uh, discriminative kind of term that, that depicted a lot of working class children and, and also children from Africa, Asia and the Caribbean. So anyway, that was an interesting conversation. And then going into the other park, I mean, the, the local my, my local park has been neglected in a lot of ways. Just contacted the local authorities to put a water fountain in the in, in the park, which there isn't one as the weather gets starts to get warm and hot and dry. And talking to the youngsters around the basketball court, the headboard hasn't been replaced; it's crumbling. There's never a net around the basket. One of the one of the part, uh, basketball participants, 16 year old, put his own net up there, which is great. So discussing with them, like, why don't we do a community event? Why don't we have a basketball tournament and competition? Have some prizes for first, second, and third place. Put on some refreshments and food put on some music, start organising ourselves and start making demands on the local authorities in terms of improvements. So, you know, it's interesting because, as I said, I've, I, I'm a father to a 17-year-old and, and then a father to a 7.5-year-old. So there's a 10-year difference. I'm raising children with a 10-year gap, right? I'm raising both of them, obviously, still. And I can noticeably see things deteriorate for my younger son than for my older son. So for my younger son, the leisure centre that we have with the swimming pool and all the other facilities is gone. They scammed the community, promised us a new leisure centre with a new you know, uh, finance capital racket around property development. They did the property development and deleted the leisure centre. I mean, you know, tens of thousands of people relied on that in, 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 in generally poor working class communities. It's gone. The other leisure centres, new rules after COVID, the rich take their advantage in any kind of crisis to rip us off, to, to, to make themselves richer. So in one local leisure centre that's remaining, there's no more lane swimming for under 16. So I can't do any lane swimming with my younger boy um, in that pool. In the other pool, another leisure centre nearby, the outside, they had two really nice swimming pools. One is still there. But it's only lane swimming until a certain amount of day. And even then I had to have an argument today to keep my son in the pool with me, saying I am doing lane swimming with my son anyway. But the smaller outside pool, gone through COVID. They filled it up. They can't be bothered to do the investment. But of course, the people at the top of the company are making their money, aren't they? So, you know, a neighbor said to me, 
if you and your children are doing all right, that's all that matters. But that's not the case, with all due respect to my neighbour, who I get on well with well. He was busting out a set from Flex FM, which is an old standing pirate station, which is coming up to the 30th year anniversary. It's not a case that, you know, if oneself and one's own children does well, that's all that matters, because our children live in a social context. We all live in a social context. We all share the, the, the transport, the, the, the community infrastructure, the parks, the green spaces, the schools. You know, this is all shared between us and it's all falling apart. It's all deteriorating and there's, you know, negligible pushback strategic from the community to demand what our children demand. Why should families, even if they haven't got children with this kind of age gap, why should, ch- why should families, decade upon decade, see a total deterioration of what their children deserve? My younger child deserves everything my older child got, and my older child got deserved everything he got, and more. And that's a collective thing. That's our children deserve everything they had get, and gotten when they're you know a bit older, the young people in their late teens or whatever, and they deserve more. Our younger children, who have got less than their older counterparts, still deserve more, at least of what their older you know com- members of the community got, and more than that, and much more than that. So who's stepping up to take responsibility? And it's interesting being a father of two children with a 10-year gap because it makes me even... I mean, I would be aware of these things anyway because my eyes are open and I'm active and I have conversations all the time in our community with, with you know, with you know just countless conversations every day with people who, are, who I don't... who I've just started to speak to or people who I've spoken to before. Even if I wasn't a father, I'd be aware. But being a father of children of, with this age gap, it's like, well, I can really see because I'm trying to raise my children with the best positive outcomes for their health and their happiness and life prospects. I can see it getting worse. And it's not fair. And I think other people can see it. And they also can see it's not fair. But why don't people act? You know, in a, in, in, a, in a grassroots fashion, take responsibility. So now we're mobilizing. So this is the call out to our audiences and to other people you may know who are, pa- who are passionate about two things at the same time. Basketball and doing the best for the youth in having basketball facilities and the support around that as well. Because it's not just about straightforward basketball. Because that's about, you know, the basic basketball court, the, the, the ground, the, the stand, the headboard, the the ring, the net, all of that is the minimal, minimal requirement. What we need is organizations of making this a joyous collective occasion that everyone else can join in with. So socialize, you know, community level basketball competitions that's independent and grassroots. So now I'm in touch with the young people and slightly older people and we're mobilizing on this. It's just a conversation and a strategy at the moment, but the idea is there. The idea is agreed upon. So let's give us over two to three months time frame to deliver this before the end of the summer holidays uh, basically at least one event uh, in this regards once we organize this and it'll be a beautiful occasion and day and the community will be uplifted just as they were with the launch of the jessica huntley community garden conversations are still happening every day with people i don't know who who, so the ripples out of that is still uh, making positive connections and this basketball tournament will be, you know, will make even more positive connections. And then we've mobilized and then we've collectively delivered as the young people should lead it. They should design it. They should basically take a lead on how it's organized and help to deliver it. And then we're on a higher level of community mobilization and organizing. And then we can strategize for more and better things for our entire community. Where is other people doing this? Come on. You know, it's really important that people step up and we do this out of a love and dedication, as the Black Panther Party said, serving our people heart and soul in, in, in bringing joy and survival and the best life we can possibly have in the current circumstances towards understanding our greater situation and understanding how this colonial and capitalist racist system is increasingly pushing us down so the very rich at the top can keep getting richer. It's not acceptable. And I hope other people f- uh, feel the same way and then act upon that consciousness and that feeling. Many thanks.